Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to my home studio, and welcome to Nebula. Uh, Nebula 2, to be precise. This guitar is shaping up to be a good one, I think. We're, we're nearly there. Burn it. Today, the fun begins. Ha <laughs> ha, yay! That being said, there's a lot more to do. Uh, now, before we get any further, this episode was sponsored by Skillshare. Check the details below and I'll talk more about that later. But uh, yeah, I'm a huge fan and you should be too. On to the guitar though. I am hoping that by the end of this video, you will see this instrument under lacquer. Before I can get to that stage though, there are a few bits and pieces I need to tidy up. There's some areas that around the headstock that had no stain, for example, and just in the corners, I couldn't quite get rid of the gold. I jumped ahead a little bit. In the original Nebula, one of, the, one of my favorite bits of the build was the fact that I essentially had an invisible tailpiece. The, the strings end at the periphery of the guitar and the the ball ends just slide over tiny little steel rods is the word i suppose and it looked really good and uh, at that well it's it is part of the guitar and we want to do it again it worked very well looks cool etc the issue is that guitar had chamfers all the way around and those little steel rods were sitting on a 45 degree chamfer at the base of the guitar here. I didn't think about that when I stained it. And I need to take a step back, put a chamfer on here, and then do a little bit of restaining. I hate redoing work, but it is where we are. Uh, now the options were I could carve out uh, a rectilinear section just around where the strings need to be. But again, uh, as was stated in one of the comments last week, essentially this instrument looks like it was grown, not made. And I want to keep on with that aesthetics. So I'm gonna start with a small chamfer around about here, make it bigger to where the strings are and then come back. And uh, it's gonna feel naughty because I'm essentially going to be planing into already finished timber. But then again, I haven't used a hand plane, at least on this guitar, in a couple of weeks, and I'm looking forward to it. Onwards. Hmm. Who do I choose? I choose you. First of all, I need to make sure that I don't go too far. Uh, that's around about where the strings are gonna be. And that's all we need. So just mark that down. And we've already got a small chamfer around the edge. We're just gonna make that a little bit more pronounced. That does look just a little bit glaring at the moment, doesn't it? Under stain though, and with the distraction of 
the strings being in place. You're not going to actually notice it. You are going to notice how gorgeous this thing is. And we are back to the staining. First of all, apply some black water-based stain, wait for it to cure, sand it back to 320. Then I apply more purple, which is what was around this particular area of the guitar. Wait for that to dry and see how it looks. Does it look all right? Maybe a little blue too. With that done, I'm going to just double check that my center line is where I think it should be and that the neck is all straight and aligned. I've done this already. Always triple check these things, especially when you're actually applying the strings. I need to mark out where I'm going to be installing these steel pins. Now I'm going for a 10 millimeter spacing and I'm using the crimson uh, small rule here, which has got a zero in the center on one side. At the bridge it would be 11 millimeters, but I want everything to pull in just a little bit towards the tailpiece to hold what we want. So 10 mil. Mm. This would have been easier if I had done it before staining. So I'm eyeballing it so that it's centered. And I just need to double check they're all 10 mil. Perfection. Now that is only half the job. I'm going to, once the lacquer is in, drill these holes out, install the rods, and everything's gonna be great. What am I going to do now? To be honest, I would like to make the bridge in its entirety once the lacquer is on because I can then do the whole job in one shot as opposed to uh, make it now and then wait until the lacquer is on, put the strings on and then adjust the bridge because I would need to make it a little bit bigger just because I, I need to. Uh, so we're going to avoid that for now. I'm going to go on to customizing the, the tuning knobs the tuning keys, the end bits. Uh, now this is something that I don't think I've even spoken about with the client at all. Well, there we go. Hi Ben, present from me to you. I need to fit the nut. I wanna get this cut and installed. Uh, not installed, cut, fit, got ready, prior to applying the lacquer. When do I want to install it? I don't know. If you lacquer over it and at some point somebody wants to change the action or replace the nut, then you have issues. It's going to be more difficult for me to then clear the lacquer that goes in and mask it off and all that jazz and then install the nut than it would be if we just installed it now and then lacquered over it. But my job is to make it easier for the people who come after, really. Come on then. Sculpt.
I am going to be making custom tuning keys. Or at least the, uh, the buttons, that's the word I'm looking for. And that is going to be amazing. But that is what I'm going to be doing at home while the guitar is a crimson pure. Before I do that, I need to mask it off a little bit, don't I? So I'm going to mask the fretboard off. and I'm going to shove tissue paper inside of the sound holes to stop overspray getting inside the guitar, etc. That should actually be possible through the various gaps that we actually have. Uh, so, on we go. I can't believe somebody else is getting this guitar. It's, it's a problem that uh, guitar builders have a lot, and one that I thought I'd cured myself of. I love this far more than I should love something that I'm passing on. Anyway, we are ready for lacquer. I am going to be spraying the first coats on myself, and then the team over at Crimson will carry on and uh, move forward with the process. We will get footage of the whole thing. All right, welcome to Crimson Guitars, and I am actually at Crimson Guitars. I'm in our spray booth. I have uh, the luxury of having access to a spray booth. I'm not going to be trying to get a two-pack spray gun finish done in my shed. I probably could if I really had to, but I don't, so I won't. Now, uh, we're here, I'm gonna get my mask on and uh, get spraying. Fun times. That's so cool. Second coat. I think I'm in love. I said earlier that this was sponsored by Skillshare. You well know that I am all about learning, constantly. 
Skillshare is a fantastic thing. There are thousands of classes, uh, illustration to user interface design, animation, fine art, marketing, productivity. There's something on there that you will love. Yeah, the first thousand people that sign up, uh, that click the link below, will get a free trial of uh, Skillshare Premium. And there really are thousands of classes with millions of people in the community. And they are always launching new premium classes at less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. It is a screaming deal. And you need to take it. You, you really do. I will brook no dissent in this matter. On with the guitar build. I am going to be making some custom guitar tuning key heads because I fancy it. I am going to be using this ebony fretboard blank. It looks good, nice and dark, but it has a massive shake down the edge and is just not fit for purpose. You can see it just there. I'm going to be basing this on some Schertler tuners. These are German made, very, very nice quality and lightweight and open backed and you know I like them a lot. I do indeed. That is perfect and it has a rectilinear shape uh, in the hole and you can't quite see it. That fits over the rectangular bits on there and that is what helps the what holds it in place as you as you turn. Now what I want to do is have something not much bigger but definitely more attractive. Now this is not an original idea not in the slightest. This is a similar shape to some tuners that I've seen made by Michihiro Matsuda, who is one of my luthiery inspirations, as it were. And I've wanted to do this for a while. And there we go. So essentially, we are going to have to drill a hole right through the middle. It's going to be square up until about here, actually. So that can fit in. Easy. Now, the thing is, I could go over to one of my two lathes and, uh, in fact, I could make a custom cutter that, that turns the exact shape I want and I just go zoom, and you're done. And that would be boring. This guitar is a little bit more organic. This guitar is a lot more organic than that. And I am literally going to cut these out by hand. I'm going to carve them by hand and there will be the odd uh, difference between each tuning key, but it's those differences that bind us together. I should have been a politician. Let us join across the aisle from the offset crowd to the single cutaway. <laughs> Go away. So before I start with the actual shape, I want to cut a rough rectangle out so I can drill a hole through the center. I've got a small section of material here and I've given myself a little bit of play. I want to drill the hole first. Once I know that my hole is centered and perfect, then I can start actually cutting and carving and shaping. Uh, this is a job for the drill press, absolutely. That is a three millimeter hole and it is all nice and centered and stuff, but I need to make it wider in part so that uh, this fits in. I need a broaching tool, really. I don't have a broaching tool. Should we make a broaching tool? I think we should. It's not called a broaching tool. It's called a brooch. It is three millimeters wide on the flat edge and a shade over four millimeters wide on the long. And it just so happens that I have a collection of uh, silver steel and brass and bronze and all sorts of stuff because you never know when you're going to need it. So this is a, I suppose it's an eighth of an inch, a little bit over four millimeters. There we go. 
and I am going to file the shape I need into the end of this and then give it teeth. So now I have something that is narrow enough to actually fit in the hole, but it is too wide. What next? So I want to carve it down to three millimeters, which is the same size as the hole, uh, for the first sort of step, and then make it slightly bigger and slightly bigger and slightly bigger, and essentially step it out over the length that I needed to be cutting, essentially. And we'll see if this works. And this is the sort of thing that I could do on a lathe, but I'm not gonna, because you don't need a lathe. See what I mean? Now, let's give it some teeth. So here we are, it goes from small to big, it's got teeth, very, very rough teeth, but hey. And uh, if I get to that depth, the, without everything splitting, uh, it should, it should work. I can also punch it through from this side. That's it. Ah, let's see. I know what I did wrong. And I feel foolish. And I am foolish. And I went with the grain because that's what you're supposed to do. I had a hole going through the piece of wood with the grain, forgetting that it was gonna split. I remember the future, you see. Uh, no, what I need to do is I need to take a piece and drill sideways across the grain and it will be much, much, much stronger and I'll be able to broach it that way. That is how wooden tuning head position, what the hell are these things called? That's how they're made. I need coffee. Back in the check. All right, I'm back. I've started on this one. It's going very, very well uh, across the grain, uh, i.e. My, my hole is going, the grain is going that way, and I'm going across it. But you knew that anyway. Uh, and it's not splitting. So, well, <laughs> we're getting there, slowly, but surely, it's, it's there, ish, in progress. <sighs> Tired now.
This has gone on. We're now, it's nearly eight o'clock at night. And I'm supposed to be up there having, having, well, having a beer and a sit down to be frank, but we have discovered that I needed to drill not with the grain, against the grain. And uh, that is one of the issues. The next issue is I made a single brooch and I stopped filming and got to it. And I now have had to make four separate brooches. Uh, one to start making the whole square, or rectangular at least. Another one to slightly widen it out. Another one to widen it out in both orientations. And then finally, one that is the correct width all the way down to take it all the way down. And what we have now is we've lost that. I wonder if I can do this while holding the camera. I don't think... Aha! We now have a chunk of ebony. <sighs> and we're done. So, what happens next? I call it a day. Uh, I am going to say thank you for watching. Click like, subscribe. Yes, I'm leaving you on another on another cliff edge. I have solved the problems. You all know that I can carve a block of wood into pretty much anything that I fancy. And uh, that's where we're gonna be. So the next stage is next week, I'm going to make six gorgeous matching ebony tuning knob keys and I don't know. I mean, it might not even be next week. It depends on how long it takes to lacquer Nebula. Maybe next week. Maybe next week is going to be something else entirely. I don't know. Anyway, please click like, subscribe. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the shenanigans going on at Crimson. And uh, yeah, I'll speak to you soon. Please consider supporting our Patreon and uh, all of that good stuff. Subscribe. Hit the like button. You know you want to. Goodbye.